it has taken nine years, five months, two weeks, and yes, one day. And now this bull market is the longest period of uninterrupted gains in American history. Now, with a slow but steady economic recovery and unprecedented aid, as Catherine was just saying from the Fed, the Dow has catapulted from around 6,500 to nearly 26 thousand the s p 500 has quadrupled and newer players like netflix and amazon have helped oh yeah have they helped that nasdaq skyrocket we've come a long way baby since this bull market started claire sebastian takes us all the way back to the beginning it was monday march 9th 2009 bernie madoff was under house arrest for the greatest ponzi scheme in history famed investor warren buffett issued a dire warning on the state of the economy we talked about it being an economic pearl harbor it's fallen off a cliff and larry kudlow then a tv pundit railed against efforts to rescue world economies they're doing the wrong kind of stimulus they are spending their tuchuses off on wall street still reeling from the collapse of 2008 it was just another down day, the Dow falling over 1% to 12-year lows. Most people unaware this was as low as it would go, the bottom of one of the worst bear markets in history. On March 10th, stocks rallied, the Dow soaring almost 6%. Soon, there was talk of economic rebirth. Do you see green shoots? I do. I do see green shoots. And by the end of the year, the Dow was back above 10,000 again. Over the years, the bull run would be tested. In August 2011, by the U.S. credit rating downgrade. The political brinkmanship we saw over raising the debt ceiling was something that was really beyond our expectations. In early 2016, by plummeting oil prices and a slowing Chinese economy. What's going on in the yuan, the Chinese currency, uh, that uh, sharp devaluation is, is very bad. And just this February, as markets spun lower over fears of the end of cheap money. Worries over rising interest rates. Concerns about higher inflation. Be it a cyclical downturn that stops the record run. The risk of recession rapidly rises as we look out to the second half of 2019 and into 2020. Well, something unexpected. One thing is clear. March 9th, 2009 was the buying opportunity of a lifetime. Claire Sebastian, CNN Money, New York. And so many of us miss it. Now, earlier on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, I spoke with a man who spent decades in the boom and bust of Wall Street, only booms lately. Ted Weisberg is president of Seaport Securities, and he told me why, get this, that this, they say this on the trading floor, you hear it, it's the most unloved bull market in history. It's Fed monetary policy that's going to have the biggest influence next to corporate profits. Politics on the, won't bother this market. You know? Well, I mean, uh, I think the answer to that is no. I mean, just uh, politics are politics, but we always have politics. But what if it derails the Trump agenda? If we, are, we do start to talk impeachment or uh, it just all the deregulation the market loves, all the tax cuts that the market loves? Uh, uh, to me, it's just all chatter. And it's background noise. It's uh, perhaps worth listening to, but at the end of the day, it's still background noise. Uh, and by the way, I would question the longest bull market in history because, in fact, if you go back to 1980 when Reagan was elected okay. and the Dow was 1,000, having taken 12 years to get through Dow 1,000, 12 years. Think about that. All right. In 1982, the market got through 1,000 and then it ran. 10 times from Dow 1000 to Dow 10,000 in the year 2000, including the crash of 87, down 22% in one day. The market went up 10 times. That's 18 years. So I would say, you know, this, is, this has been fits and starts, and I guess with the benefit of hindsight, it's been a, a heck of a run, but we've had other big runs besides this run. You literally have five seconds. Why do people call this the most unloved bull market ever? Oh, because... Because the background, the background noise is so toxic. But at the end of the day, it's Fed monetary policy and terrific corporate earnings, and the rest of it is simply noise.